Hello everyone, it's Meg, and in this tutorial I'm going to talk about just a few basic world edit commands that you probably heard of and know of, but I'm going to talk about them anyway because this is the world edit guide, so let's talk about it. We're going to be talking through the fill and the hollow command mainly, but I'm also going to be throwing in a couple extra commands that you probably will never need to use, but I'm going to talk about them anyway. Let's go ahead and get started with the fill command. The fill command does exactly what you might think, it will fill in a gap of some sort. So here I'm going to fill in where this yellow box and this blue box intersect. If I want to fill it up to the top of the yellow box, you're going to want to make sure that you're standing one block below where you want it filled. Because when you use the command fill, the blocks will generate on the same level that you're standing. So I'm just going to put a block here in a corner just so, because it's easier to place it there. And I want to make sure I'm standing one block below the surface I need to fill in. Now just do the command fill with your block ID and a radius. Of course, if you can't tell, a radius means it will always be a circle shape. And you can see it didn't quite fill it in with that because it wasn't large enough. So let's try that again. Let's undo this and try it again. This time we'll make the radius much larger, much larger than it even needs to be, and it will be enough to fill in the rest of it. Now in our green square, we're going to fill this in again, but this time with some depth. So just like all commands, we'll have the ID, the radius, and the height in our command. And you can see how it is filling it in, and it's going up to that point, and it's going down that many blocks. But you can see there's some blocks on the edge here that aren't going straight down from the edge, and that's because it's actually filling in the shape of a half sphere. And I can come over here to demonstrate this. So I'm just going to run the fill command with a stone block, and we're just going to make it a 10 block radius and 10 blocks high, and you can see all it did was create the bottom half of a sphere. So that's basically how the command works, just creating half spheres. Which is kind of weird, because if you did fill this barely to the corner, you might have a few extra blocks underneath that didn't get filled in. That's why you have to make sure you're using an extra large radius to get all of those gaps filled in. And a funny thing about this is you can't even make it an oval. So if I try to make this really, really high, like 100, it's actually just going to stop at that same point. It doesn't go beyond that. So basically, the height has its limitations based on the radius. So if you wanted it to go higher, you'd have to make the radius much larger. Now what I have just shown you is basically how the fill command works for standard world edit. So you really can't do much beyond filling in a horizontal or flat surface. Now, let's say you had something you wanted to fill vertically. You can't do this with regular world edit, but you can use fast async world edit to do this. And you'd have to be on some kind of spigot server or something that actually has this plugin. You can't get it for single player, but I thought I'd mention it because not a lot of people know about it. So here's how it works. It actually works the exact same way as the fill command. If you look here at the command, it shows you all of the different parameters that are in this command. And the only thing that's different from the regular world edit is that you can type in the direction. So let's go ahead and fill it and give it a block and a radius. Now for the depth, it doesn't matter what number you use for depth, you just have to have at least one. And I will explain why in a minute, but the depth number doesn't make any difference when you're filling something vertically. And then we'll enter our direction and I want this to be front because I want to fill directly in front of me. So I'm going to do that and back up. Oh wow, what has happened? So you can see it's filled in the entire hole, but it's also filled beyond that. And that's because it just completely ignores that depth command, like I said. It will stop if there's a boundary, but if there isn't, it's just going to keep going and fill in all of those air blocks. And you can do this fill command in any direction. It could be front, back, left, right, up, or down. So let me just fill this again with another depth of one. And see, that worked when I filled it in on the right. But of course, the depth is still going to be a problem. Pretty much the only way you can fix that is if you already have a back to your surface. Which isn't very practical, because what's the point of filling it in vertically if you're going to have to fill in the back to begin with? But anyway, let's go ahead and fill this left. Let's make the radius big enough to fill this entire thing. And you can see that this works because it's getting blocked by all of those surrounding blocks, so it's got nowhere else to go. But honestly, I don't know what the point of using the command this way is when you could just fill something normally and then rotate it afterwards. Because either way, if you do fill it in vertically, you're going to have to chop off all those excess blocks or block it off. You're going to have to do something to mess with it. Anyway, whether you use it or not, at least now you know that it exists. You're welcome. 
Now I'm going to talk about a few commands that are kind of related to the fill command. Not exactly, but since this is the world at a guide, I thought I'd go ahead and mention them in this video. So let's say you had a body of water such as this. I would see this command being most useful where you're actually working on an actual Minecraft world as opposed to creative building, but we're going to mention this anyway. But you can very easily clear the water out by using the command drain with a radius. And you can pretty much just look at this and see what it's doing. It's just draining it in the shape of a sphere once again. Now, it's important to note that you have to be on the same level as the water fort to work, so it won't work if I'm standing above the water at all. But I do need to be either in the water or directly next to the water as long as I'm on the same level. Now, on this server, there is zero tick speed, so this water is just going to stay where it is. But if you are doing this on an actual world, the water is probably going to be filling in and flowing all over the place. If you ever need to correct the water to where it's all level and stationary again, or if you ever just wanted to fill this in again with water, there is the command fix water that we can use to do that. So that will be fix water with a radius again. Oh, it didn't work there because I wasn't directly next to the water. So let's come over next to the water and try again. Okay, so that worked. So that's kind of like how drain is too, where you have to actually be next to it or in the water for it to work. I don't know why they have this command, because you technically could do the same thing with the fill command. But it does have two main differences, number one being that it automatically puts in the height for you, and number two being you can just be standing next to the water as opposed to being required to stand in it, if you know what I'm saying. If I were to use the fill command, I would have to actually be in the water to use it, whereas with this, I can just stand right next to it. I should also mention that those same commands also work for lava, so we could also use drain to drain the lava. But to fix it, it's just going to be the opposite of fix water, which will be fix lava. So just wanted to point that out, that there are two separate commands for those. Anyway, those are just a couple extra basic commands. I'm sure you've heard about them, but I just want to mention them because they are kind of indirectly related to the fill command. The last command I'm going to show you is the hollow command, which does the exact opposite of filling. It hollows out a build. So you're going to want to make a selection around whatever it is you want hollowed, and then it's really simple, we're just going to do the command hollow. Now by default, this command will delete everything inside the build, leaving a one block thickness around the outside edge. I don't know if you noticed how the lighting kind of changed when I did that, because the shadows are falling differently, but we can also take a peek inside and see that yes, all those blocks are gone. Magic. The only time where this would not work properly is when you have stairs or slabs on the outside and it will register as a full block but it's deleting the block behind it so it's going to leave holes if you have a stair or a slab on the outside. To fix this all we have to do is change the thickness that we're hollowing this out so if I add a number behind it such as hollow 2 that's going to leave a thickness of two blocks on the outside and I'm sure you can make the thickness whatever you want but the point of hollowing is to make it hollow so I would say two or three is generally what you're going to be doing. I don't use this command too, too often, but I did want to mention it in case you weren't familiar with it. And it kind of coincides with the fill command, so it fits perfectly in this video. That's all I have for this tutorial. If you'd like to learn more about these commands, I know I've basically covered everything about them, but if you did want to learn more commands on your own, I will leave a link in the description to a wiki page. It's very, very helpful. Or if you're more of a visual learner, I do have some more world edit tutorials that you can also check out. But until the next time, happy building guys! I'll see you later!